Welcome back to Live Your Dream, It's About You. And as I said earlier, I'm so excited and honored to have Angel Galvez here today. It's so wonderful to have you here. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Good day, folks. I'm happy to be here, and thank you for inviting me to being live here at Your Dream. Uh, it's about you. Yes. Um, now, okay, now, Angel, I would like for the, the viewers to know, like, your background, like, where you grew up and all of that. Yeah, sure. So, um, you know, I'm originally from Tulare County. I was born in Tulare. My parents migrated in the late 1960s to Lindsay, California. And like most migrants from Mexico, they worked in the farms and in the packing houses. We lived for a number of years in Strathmore as well. And finally, my parents were able to acquire permanent housing through the housing urban development in Woodville Lake Camp. I grew up in a community that was drug and gang infested. And uh, I managed to graduate in 1990 from high school. And that led to a really uh, an academic career that um, I'm great. glad to share with you all. That's wonderful. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And I appreciate that. So as I, as I mentioned, um, all the while I was working in seasonal jobs, um, taking, you know, working alongside of my parents in the fields, I decided to really uh, take on an academic career. So I transferred from Portugal College to Fresno City College, and I managed to graduate with my liberal studies degree. Then later I enrolled to Fresno State University and I, I received my bachelor's degree in criminology with an emphasis in victimology. And wow. I joined... Congratulations. Thanks, I appreciate that. Uh, it, was, it was such a good experience that I met uh, Dr. John Paul Dusage, who is a tenured professor at Fresno State, and he gave me an opportunity to travel with him around the world wow. and do research uh, and development and really focus on strategies that solve global issues. Wow. So That's great. And so it's my understanding that you're running for Tulare County Board of Supervisors, is that right? That's right. Uh, Tulare County Board of Supervisors is a uh, five district, um, five district, it's broken up in five districts. And the district that I'm running for is District 1. District 1 represents the eastern part of Visalia. It goes into Farmersville, Lemon Cove, Three Rivers, uh, part of the northern eastern Sierra, all the way down to Lindsay, Strathmore, which I mentioned a, a few minutes ago. Also Woodville. Uh, it was remapped, so now it incorporates the town that I've, I grew up in, which I'm very happy wow, about. That's exciting. And so that's really the, uh, the geographic area that it represents. Um, District 1, to me, has been something of passion because not only do I, I, I currently live with my wife and my three beautiful children in Exeter, and I've been following the Board of Supervisors' uh, minutes and agendas and working alongside with many of them on solutions for our communities. So when I heard that Alan Ishida was moving on, I decided to then run for, uh, for the Board of Supervisors because I'm, it represents all of that area that I grew up in. So basically you decided to live your dream. Live my dream. That, that's what it was. Um, I, I decided that, I, that I, was, I had equipped myself and I felt ready to really take on a role of a Board of Supervisor, which they, of course, um, deal with a lot of issues and they deal with um, complex, um, complex systems that, that are to benefit all of the Tulare County residents. So I wanted to, to give it a shot and think I'm prepared for it. Well, that's great. That's wonderful. And could you like maybe tell the, uh, the viewers, the voters out there, what your platform is or what you, know, what, what you stand for and all of that? Yeah, absolutely. Before I answer that, though, let me, allow okay. me to say this, that when I was uh, traveling around the world with, with my mentor, Dr. John Dusage, he, when we took on this opportunity, I received two accreditations for, in research and development. One was from a private university, Havariana, in Bogota, Colombia, and the other was from Tokiwa University in Mito, Japan. And wow. uh, and that was that was like an experience that um, I'm glad that I took and that I that I got. When we came back, he and I partnered to put together two nonprofits. The first was Femicide Action Committee, which ensured 
equal rights to women in the workforce and in academics. Wow. The other was Elder Abuse Services, Inc., which ensured culturally and linguistically competent services to the elders of the community of Fresno. And this organization still exists today. I served as president for two years on that organization. Wow, that's, oh, wow. Thank you so much for your service with that. Well, that, that, I think that's really um, what I'm here to do. I, I, uh, after that, you know, I did lead into, um, I'm both, uh, I'm licensed by the California Department of Real Estate, and I'm also licensed with the National Licensed Mortgage Registry. My banking and real estate license led to like a six-year career, all the while I was doing some of this nonprofit and social services, because that's really where my passion was. Um, I was working in the banking industry to really learn accounting practices that were sound, and, um, and that was a great experience. I, I did that. I managed a multi-million dollar portfolio for Allied Corporation. And finally, um, after deciding to go full-time into social services, I got married. I moved uh, to Exeter, where I live with my wife, Loren, and my beautiful three children. We live on a five-acre ranch. But uh, I want to say that I currently work for Tulare County Health and Human Services Agency, mental health branch. And the skills and the projects that I've worked on uh, have been all with ethnic services and community planning. And that is really what drove me to, to have a passion even more to be able to bring improvement onto the people of the community. And the reason why I'm running is that my philosophy and my vision is quite simple, Patty. If I may call you Patty. Uh, Letty. Letty. <laughs> Letty. It's Sorry. Okay. I apologize. Or you can call me Letty. Letty. Okay. Letty. That's easier for me to, to remember. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's okay. Uh, Letty. My philosophy and my vision is quite simple. As a, as a public servant, and a practicing minister, I'm here to serve people. And I'm here to serve them in an honest and fair way, treating people with dignity and respect for a brighter tomorrow. And my platform is around uh, the health and safety of our communities, mm -hmm. water infrastructure, because water's extremely important for the Central Valley, not only for the Central Valley, but for Tulare County as well. Oh yes, definitely. And fiscal responsiveness. And so those are the three focus areas of what I am uh, not proposing to do for, for the rest, but what I'm already doing. So that's why I, I, uh, I'm focusing my work around those three. Wow. Well, you have an incredible background. I had no idea that you were in real estate or are and still in real um, estate. Well, the thing is, is I'm not, I'm not practicing real uh -huh. estate. I haven't practiced real estate for about four years now mm -hmm. because, as you know, you're a practicing real estate agent. That's right? what I was going to say. It's a small world. But yes. anyway, go ahead. You <laughs> but what I want to say about that is that I think uh, real estate is a really good area for anybody to get into. If your dream is to learn about land use and zoning, especially around the Central Valley because we have a lot of that. We mm -hmm. have a lot of land. And real estate gives you really the skills, and not only that, it gives you also the ethics that you need to really be making sound decisions when you're either um, behind a project or approving a project or representing a client who wants to buy property. You really have to understand the land use and the zoning and whether or not that really meets the needs of the buyer or the, the, the community that lives around there. So with that said, that takes a lot of work. You work a lot. Uh, it's not an easy job by any means. People think that real estate is very easy or banking is really, it's not. There's a lot of regulation and policy that you have to follow, which is, um, which is good. It's a good experience. So I don't practice because I don't have time to really do my due diligence. Right. So if I'm just focused on where my passion is at now, no, that and that's being sense. a public servant. Yeah, that totally makes sense. But I just I found it. You just never know. You know, it's a small world. Since, it is. <laughs> you know, I'm in the same field as you are. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, or you know, the real estate field. Yes. But as you were saying that about, uh, you said something that made me think about like mentoring. I've said that before on the show. I'm big on I. Uh, that's another thing we have in common. In, in a way, I'm. Um, my parents were immigrants, not from Mexico, mm -hmm. but from Italy, and both of them were. You know, they were 
they didn't have a lot of education. They were smart people who didn't have a lot of education, but they always pushed education. And I've always, as I'm very patriotic. They were very patriotic, became citizens and everything. I'm very patriotic <laughs> with my <laughs> USA shirt. And, and just like you were saying, you know, and it's like, and I love being a mentor and helping people out, which yes. is one reason why I came up with this idea with the show. I want to support people's businesses and, and, fun, and fundraisers and causes and, you know, and people who are running, you know, on a platform like yours. I mean, you, with your background, I mean, seriously, and I'm not lying, it gives me goose pimples. It just really touches, it touches me because it's like, it's just, uh, it's so refreshing to see people like you running. Yes. Well, I, I appreciate the really polite comments. And that's why when I was invited to come to the show, I was eager to be here because I think when you live your dream, Sometimes you really don't know your steps ahead of you. Mm -hmm. it, it somehow just works out. But in the, in the poverty and in the um, community uh, drug infested uh, that I grew up in, um, it really felt like I needed to do something positive to really leave something for someone to say, you know, if, if this individual who is challenged by all of these um, barriers can I then really succeed in something? And so win or lose, I'm already winning because I feel that I've accomplished a lot and not only, uh, and not to really uh, sound like prideful or anything like that, but rather humbly I've accomplished a lot so that people can know that, you know, it's a state of thinking and you can definitely accomplish anything you want. It sounds like a cliche when they tell us like movie stars and people um, in the spotlight that you know you can do anything you want or you can accomplish anything you want I believe that for myself and I I, I kept believing that and I kept believing that and so it, it, you can accomplish anything you want um, don't ever let anybody tell you that you will not amount to anything um, listen to the positives be strength based focused and I assure you that you will accomplish your dream yes I totally agree with that and just to have um, mentors out there and you know I'd be willing to be a mentor for real estate um, mm -hmm. or you know if people want to come on the show like I said and I'm sure you probably would want to mentor people too somewhere in your time when you have time but <laughs> but anyway but still and just being uh, a public servant yes. you're already helping people a lot so um, Anyway, now we don't usually do this, but I would like to invite you to come back to our next segment after we have a commercial. Um, would you be willing to do that? I would love that. Thank you for okay, doing that. Okay, this is really great information. So thank you so much. So stay tuned. Well, hello, everyone. This is Leticia Pinjitori, and it's Live Your Dream. It's about you. And so we were talking with Angel Galvez, and we brought him back. He was... Uh, uh, very willing to come back to, for the second sec segment and so we can explore more about your platform and uh, you know your ideas background whatever you'd like for us to know so um, go ahead well thank you I it's it's a it's a privilege and honor to be back I, I wanted to stay because I think that um, members of the community can benefit from these messages and you mentioned something about mentorship and I take that extremely seriously. It all started, as I mentioned previously, that Dr. John Paul Dusich, who became my good friend, he was my mentor. He was very instrumental in who I became. But I didn't only have him as a mentor. I, I, pre previous to him, I had a, uh, my Spanish high school teacher. Her name's uh, Dr. Magdalena Sanchez. Those of you in, tele in the Tulare community may, may know her name. She was very instrumental in, in, in my future as well of who I became today because she was behind mentoring me in terms of academics and, and the seriousness of being able to pursue academics. Uh, and so I tell people that if you, if you don't have a mentor, definitely get a mentor. Mm -hmm. Have a mentor because mentors like uh, Letty and mentors like uh, those who mentored me have really lived enough, long enough to know how to really navigate the system, how to network, how to connect, how to, how to really follow your dream uh, in the right path because they've done it. They've to empower people, right? Right, right. Exactly. 
And so I always, I always tell people that if you don't have a mentor um, or you don't have a minister uh, over you, then, then you've really cut the person that can edit your life. And if a person is going to be for the better, betterment of yourself and empower you, they're not going to edit your life in a bad way. They're going to edit your life in a very good, positive way, like they did for me. So I'm very thankful for that. Um, you mentioned the question about, was it my platform, or a little bit about the nonprofits? Is that oh, right? right. What I, what I was um, going to say was, you know, like I said earlier, the show is, I, I'm here to support people's nonprofits, businesses, etc. And you mentioned those two nonprofits, and both of those are near and dear to my heart as well. You know, being a woman, I, you yes. know, and I've always, I, I just, just in general, I mean, it's women's issues, um, elder yes. issues, yes. Um, veterans issues, animal issues. All of those are things that really are extra near and dear to my heart. Yes. So uh, what I was going to say was that the two nonprofits, if they are still existing, it sounds like they are, if they want to come on my show, please tell them to contact me. Okay, I will. I will, uh, I will uh, let them know. And as you mentioned, these two nonprofits um, were a great experience for me because I got to really get into development, understand bylaws, and collaborate and work with an inclusive approach with teams and teamwork and how important that was to really ensure that these nonprofits were viable and sustainable. And so I will, I will talk to them and I'll ask them if they would love to do that, I know I would, uh, to bring them onto the show and talk a little bit about the leadership that took place there and how they're doing now. Um, I know that uh, Elder Abuse Services Inc. Is, uh, has, has uh, really done a lot of good for elders in the community of Fresno. I would love to see maybe that in Tulare. Um, we definitely have a really nice, um, we have very nice uh, county systems that solve uh, elder abuse services, but you know, I, I, I don't know of any nonprofits, so that would be nice. Right, because I know the DA's office gets involved with yes. that in, in Tulare County. I know somebody I used to work with actually at the DA's office she um, she's involved with that like the the victim witness part of yes. it and all of that so yes. yeah but I know what you're saying in terms of a nonprofit that would be great absolutely I mentioned too you mentioned the DA's office and kind of how they work with um, those sectors of our community and you know part of my criminology degree was really uh, was really to give me sort of the um, the theoretical approaches to how to solve issues in the local level. And um, I, I wanted to mention too, and I failed to mention that after all of this, um, I, en I enrolled at Fresno Pacific University and I got a blended program with Christian theology and mastered with honors in organizational leadership. Wow, so congratulations. I, thank you. <laughs> and wow. so I wanted to continue that passion for academics, but now, you know, I do have children. I do plan to someday maybe go back and and do a uh, you know either a, a degree in political science or uh, economics, something along those lines, uh, a PhD I should say in those in those lines. But but uh, not now. I, I really want to focus my time now serving the people of my community for a very long time. And I have three beautiful young children, mm -hmm. so there's there's no way that I'm going to do that right now during their life their lifespan. So. Maybe once when they grow up and they get older and my wife and I are, are, uh, are, are single again, I guess you could say, <laughs> um, maybe I would, I would take on that, that um, endeavor. But um, you mentioned the, the DA's office and I currently work for Tulare County Health and Human Services Agency, mental health branch. And I work um, with overarching goals that, that include all of the different leadership from the sheriff's department to the district attorney's office, because Tulare County really works together with Tulare County entities, mm -hmm. and so we use a collaborative approach, and that has given me really some really neat skills to learn how to work well with others in the county system, and so um, you know I kind of bring that to the table because I think it's important when leaders are running for an office that um, that leaders know that they can count on working well with those individuals who fill those seats. So that said, um, I think uh, uh, hopefully it works out. No, that makes a lot of sense, and that's really good because it's all teamwork or, you know, just kind of 
obviously working with other agencies or or um, departments or whatever to make to make it work. That makes yeah. a lot of sense. Yes, that yes. really does. Um, and let me see. Was there anything else? Did you want to talk specifically about your platform? I know we did talk about that. I don't know if there was anything else you wanted to add or anything like that. <clears throat> yeah, sure. Uh, one of the things that one of the things that I've been doing already, not necessarily what I propose to do, is serving people as a public servant. And one of the things that I focused a lot of my work on was the health and safety of our communities. In recent ride-alongs with the local police departments, I learned that many of the 911 calls that they were responding to involved suicide calls, involved mm -hmm. mental health uh, crises. Those were among 90% of the calls that we responded to. And I did the ride-alongs because I wanted to get a fresh lens as to really, you know, when we talk about the health and safety of our communities, what is really going on? Mm -hmm. So I took it upon myself to do this and being that I work already with the mental, mental health branch, I really have a good understanding of what the communities need, what, what the health uh, needs are in our community, not only from mental health, but also extending services like the Affordable Care Act um, in, in, in the community, events that we do, we leverage those resources so that people can receive the services necessary to them where they're at so we meet people where they're at and that's really the philosophy that i that i hope to bring is that i am not here to serve uh i am not here to be served i am here to serve people where they're at and so that model those models that i've been applying in the work that i do um, have worked really well and so that's that's part of that health and safety of our communities is to really ensure that these these um the solutions that we bring are equitable to the people in those communities. The water infrastructure, there's a really neat project. Um, when you think of leadership, think of innovative and creative leaders. Mm -hmm. Because if we get trapped in old business, we'll never get out of there. We'll continue to have problems like we're having till this day. Mm -hmm. And it's unfortunate. And that's another reason why I decided to run. Because I wanted to see change and I wanted to see change happen now. And I don't see that. So my passion is to lead that change that I've already been leading in the communities where I live and work. And the water infrastructure is a very simple, innovative, creative project. It's water storage. I proposed and, and, I, and I published this article through the Valley Voice, and you can pull it up there if you want to read it. It's called the Tulare County Beaver Reservoir Project. To, this year is a great example of how we can trap water that is coming down from the Sierra and it's the snow melt. We had a very heavy storm, but these storms don't happen frequently. They're maybe once every five years. And so all of this snow melt is going to leave the valley. We cannot, we cannot store it or we cannot trap it because our dams are not sufficient to sustain all of that water. So we have to release it. Uh -huh. my, my reservoir project... <laughs> It's very simple. We, we do an environmentally friendly storage using the dead wood that's already up there. And we store and trap this water for the consumption of ag, urban, everything. Economic development, if we talk about economic development, all economic developments that are large in scale use a lot of water. Mm -hmm. So this water reservoir project is very, a very simple solution, very efficient, cost efficient solution that will solve our problems for hundreds of years. So we wow. got to think long term, not short term. Yes, and definitely. And so that's, that's really what my, the focus of my platform uh, stands on. Well, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, I mean, anybody who worries about water, which is most of us in the yeah. Central Valley, well, California in general, but we're talking about the Central Valley, Vote for him. <laughs> <laughs> so my, my, hope, my hope, and when you say vote for him, <laughs> Um, I think that my approach is not necessarily I'm the more qualified or I'm the one who promises or I'm the better fit. No. I always say do your homework, research every individual, find out about them, learn from them, ask them questions, call them up. You're, feel free to call me up. My phone number is 559-909-2286. And 
Ask me the difficult questions. Talk to me about ethics and moral standards. Talk to me about the things that a leader should have a regard for. And make an informed decision, because I do my homework, I do my research. I don't vote on things just off the, off the fly. I want to be very informed so that I feel that my vote counts. And that's how I make decisions. I hope that that's how you make decisions. And if you do and you're concerned for the, if you're an individual concerned for the health and safety of our communities, water infrastructure, or fiscal responsiveness, then join me and let's lead change together. That sounds great. That just sounds wonderful. I wish you were running for president. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> well, I, I hope to stay in Tulare County. Uh, I know, but I'm I, just saying yeah, because no, of our, some of our candidates, I won't mention any names. But <laughs> yeah. And, you know, that's an interesting point. We'll, we'll maybe conclude with that. Okay. Is that you mentioned something very important. Some people use political platforms uh, or political offices as a stepping stone to move on to something else. Mm -hmm. I've been asked the question before, and I, I would like for people to, to know that I am not looking for that. I, I was not living in Tulare County until after I finished everything that I wanted to finish. And then I told myself, if I'm going to give back to a community, which, one, which will it be? Because as you know, if you're educated, you get a lot of offers, you don't have to stick around. Um, it's pretty open throughout the Central Valley, all the way from north to south. But I decided to come back to give back to those that gave to me. And, 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 that, was to, and that is Tulare County. So my point being is that I'm not using this as a stepping stone to move on anywhere. I hope that if the voters vote me in and elect me and they continue to see progress and improvement, that they keep me there for as long as they want. I will be serving them. Uh, for as long as they want. So um, I just wanted to point that out because sometimes people do end up using it for a short period of time and mm -hmm. they try to move on to something else. Right. And I'm not going to do that. And I was going to say, I hope I didn't sound like that's what I was trying to say. I no, was just no, saying, yeah. because some of the candidates out there, you know, it's like you, you're very, it's you, very refreshing candidate <laughs> with, I mean, very well qualified, very well rounded, and what makes it even better is your attitude and your willingness to serve and your humbleness. Thank I mean, you. that really means a lot. Well, and I appreciate that. Yeah, I, and you, I mean, I just, yeah, I'm just going to say I'm just very honored that you, well, thank you. you were here on the show, and I'm very honored to, um, to, so basically, I guess I could say, Vote for Angel Galvez. If, if they have to be in your district, correct? Yes, they do. They have to be in any of those um, areas that I mentioned earlier in the show uh, in order for them to vote. But if you see Angel Galvez on your ballot, then <laughs> you know that you can vote for Angel Galvez. And so I'd really much appreciate that uh, if I had your vote. And uh, I see on the screen that the spelling of your name and your phone number is on. But do you want to just say it just one more time? Just just in case yeah absolutely so angel galvez uh the the spelling of that is a-n-g-e-l-g-a-l-v-e-z as it is in your on your screen and my phone number is 559-909-2286 i'd love to hear from you and listen to what concerns and issues you are facing in your community well thank you again and uh good my luck pleasure. to you thank you very much it was a blessing to be here on this show thank you thank you